I always say accuracy and standardization equals measurability. You need to be able to take a picture using the same settings from the same perspective over a period of time that can span from weeks to years. Incorrect positioning and angle can lead to perspective distortion and affect the perception of size. So when taking intraoral photographs, we need to ensure we can achieve repeatable views while eliminating perspective distortion. So how do we do this? How, how can we ensure we get the same angle every single time? Well, we need a reference point and the best reference point is the occlusal line. So when we take an intraoral image, we are aiming for the occlusal line to be straight across and in the middle of the frame. If you're looking too far down, the occlusal line will take the form of a smile. Similarly, if you look up, the occlusal line will be an upside down smile. You can use the markings in the viewfinder as a guide and you want to ensure there is equal space at either side of the teeth and that the image is not too far to the right or to the left. If you are photographing the patient in a dental chair, um, which is often more difficult than having them sat up, you may want to raise or lower the chair and then ask the patient to turn their head towards you to avoid you leaning over and putting your back at risk. You then rotate your body to face the patient and rotate the camera to the same angle as the occlusal line. When undertaking the oblique or lateral views, you are again aiming for the occlusal line to be straight in the frame, ensuring there is equal space on either side. You want to capture all the teeth from an oblique perspective, so you would aim for the canines to be perpendicular to the camera plane. Any further round and you will risk losing the posterior teeth from the image. If you are wanting a more lateral perspective, then you would aim to have the first molar perpendicular to the camera plane which will likely require alternative retraction. For the mirror shots, you are aiming to have the full occlusal surface parallel to the camera plane. You will need to continuously ask the patient to open wide. And even with the most experienced patients, everyone tends to slowly close the mouth during the process, so it's always worth reminding them to, to continually open them wide. If you can see too much of the anterior surface of the teeth, the patient will need to open further. To ensure the image is straight on the upper arch views, you can use the medium raffe for alignment. The lower arch is a little more difficult as it does not have any reference points. However, if you ensure equilateral space at the edge of the posterior teeth, it should be rotated correctly. I think all in all, when you're doing these types of shots, practice makes perfect and there's no, no technique that can perfect it other than practicing. <laughs>